Welcome to OK Miniatures. Today's video, we're going to be making a hot wire cutter. I base my design off of the King of Randoms video from a few years back. I did make some modifications to use a different transformer, which would be slightly cheaper. Something is alive. I modified it to use a slightly cheaper transformer and also different components that I had on hand. To start off with, I assembled some PVC pipes. I'm not going to go through showing you what I cut exactly, but basically you need two end caps, two elbows, and then two pieces this length and this piece. This one's going to determine your height, so I chose about 12 inches um, since I don't intend to cut anything that big, but if it was less than like 6 inches, it might start um, affecting how well I can cut. Keep in mind that there will be a table set right in here, so this isn't the actual height. You got take off three or four inches, and that would give the actual height of length of the wire. These guys will determine how much space there is between your wire and this guy. Um, so if you want to cut wider pieces, straight sections, um, you'll want to have these guys longer. If they are too long though, they will have quite a bit of flex, which these ones do. So we'll get into how to fix that in a minute. Also, you'll want to drill a couple holes in these end caps. That's for some eye bolts that will hold the wire. I also drilled a hole back here. This one does not go all the way through, it's for the wire. I drilled another hole for the support piece to connect this guy to. And then I drilled a third hole right here for a second support piece. For the support, I used some 2x4s. I didn't use any specific measurements for my project. I just based everything off of, I basically measured these. These are some important dimensions for these pipes. After that, I basically just used what I had and modified it, everything to make sure it fit this. So this is how this goes in here. I have two holes. So these holes, there's a hole th through here for the support bolt. I just drilled the hole based on the size of my bolt. This guy goes right through there, nice and easy. So a few washers and wing nut hold this all nice and sturdy. You can loosen it and then tilt this a little bit. Um, that could cause issues with the table part, but if I wanted to, I can easily take this off and use it just as a knife once I got the wiring in. I also have another hole through the top piece here, and this is because, as of right now, this has a lot of flex. Putting this bolt through here, So by adding this bolt, I can add a little bit of tension to this and keep it from flexing nearly as much. For this piece, I got a long piece here just to act as a support on the bottom. And then this guy is three and a half inches tall, which is the same as the thickness of a two by four. That way it can act as a support right by where the wire comes through the table to support everything. For the table, I made this design based on this board and the dimensions I wanted for the pipe, for the length and height. So this guy I had in the garage, it's a really nice smooth board, so I really wanted to use that. It's a little bit longer than I'd like, but that's alright. I put supports on this side and these guys. I really wanted three locations, so that way it's not wobbly if one of them's not quite right. and then. I added these little length pieces so that if for some reason it slipped off the table it wouldn't 
immediately fall. It's got a little bit more wiggle room than that. And I also added these two boards in the middle. And they act as a guide for this board. So that way it doesn't wiggle around too much. For all these boards, I put a few screws in and I made sure to use a, a countersink so that they sit nice and flush, nothing sticking over the top. So as you can see, it slides right on there. Uh, I chose the location of this hole to be just above the table, and that way um, it's kind of pivoting right above the table. It might be a little bit too low. I wouldn't mind having it a little bit higher to have some clearance between the table and it, but that's all right. This slot here is for the wire. Uh, I cut it using a table saw. This slot will allow the wire to drop right through there, and then if I want to take this piece off for better storage, I can slide it out and have no issues with having to take off the wire or anything like that. I carved a hole for a light switch, dimmable light switch right here, and a power switch right here. I also added a few holes for some zip ties to keep all the wires organized. So let's get on to electronics. Alright, so this probably looks pretty complicated, but it's not. Um, we got power cord comes in and the ground wire which is green connects to the green ground wire of the light switch and also the yellow ground wire of the power supply. Now yellow normally isn't ground but for this particular power supply it is and I know that because I took the power cable end of it which I had chopped off this used to be one cord and then I used a multimeter to make sure which color is which and it was yellow was ground blue was one of these guys I don't remember which um, anyway don't remember the colors use a multimeter and check them if they aren't the typical green black and white so that's the ground wires for the hot wire from the cable that comes in and connects to this wire of the inline fuse um, and then the fuse goes on to one of the black wires on the switch. The other black wire, that goes to the hot wire on the transformer cord. And then the final wire is white, which goes to the neutral on the transformer. And I just use these wire nuts to connect all this stuff. That's good to go. This guy, plug into the transformer. So on the other side of the transformer, we got just a power and ground. So this used to be one wire, I snipped it in half and reconnected the grounds. I will add a wire nut momentarily. And then the two power lines are gonna get soldered to this switch. Then we'll put two wires, one of which will go to the top of the hot wire cutter, the other will go to the bottom, and they will be connected by a nichrome wire. The dimmer switch does make things a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more wiring. You can't just plug it straight into the wall. If you skipped that, you could, and skip the fuse, you could just use the 12 volt, 5 amp power transformer, plug it into the wall, plug that, connect that to the wire cutting portion, and good to go. I appreciate the, the light switch dimmer, though, does give you a temperature control. So on the lowest settings, it doesn't even cut, and on the hot, highest settings, it cuts really fast. So that gives you some control over how fast you want to cut, accuracy, and if you want to make more detailed cuts, you can go slower without burning the foam or melting a deeper, wider cut than you'd like. I'm going to solder these guys get a wire nut. I will be back with this final section of the wiring of this guy. I'm also going to stick these guys all in the hot wire. That's pretty straightforward. I'm going to just use zip ties to keep it all organized. Be back in a bit. I ran the wire through the back of the pipe, the vertical pipe, and split the two ends down the other top and bottom pipes. Doesn't matter which one's which. I then made a wire loop out of the ends of the wires and used that loop to connect it to the eye bolt on the cap. So I put a washer on each eye bolt and then stuck that through the end caps and put another washer and then the wire loop 
another washer, and then the nut. Did that on both sides, and then I added the spring to one of the ends. When I put the wire onto it, I pulled it tight, tried to stretch out the spring a little bit, and I noticed that the top pipe really came down and deformed a lot, which makes sense since neither of the elbow joints are super tight, super strong. So I ended up putting another bolt, like I did on the bottom, on the top, to hold those pipes sturdy. Uh, originally I was going to put the spring on the bottom side, but I switched to putting it on the top because um, the twisted wire bit would stick up through the table and that wouldn't give a nice clean cut. After I did this, I noticed that I probably could skip the spring and just use these two bolts to provide tension. Then I plugged it in, turned on the switches, and nothing happened. So I pulled out the multimeter and started testing some things. I, I knew I might have wired the switch wrong since I kind of just went off memory on that and turns out I did wire it wrong. I used one silver tab and one gold tab instead of using both the silver tabs. That was my mistake, but multimeter really helped me fix that. If you are doing an electrical project like this, I would recommend using a multimeter if you have any issues whatsoever or have any questions. It was useful for figuring out the wire colors on the non-standard extension cord and troubleshooting when the thing didn't work. After making that change, I plugged in the cord, plugged in the wire cutter to the electrical components, turned on the switches, and it was good to go. really happy with how this turned out. I'm really, really grateful that it ended up working. Uh, that was kind of nerve-wracking to wire everything up and hope for the best, but it worked and I'm really, really excited. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please hit the thumbs up and let me know what you think down below. If you'd like to see more train building um, and potentially related equipment DIY projects, please subscribe and with that, I'll see you in the future.